three, two, one. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Inside Movies Galore. I am your uh, uh, one of your hosts, David Streggy, and here uh, we are continuing our monthly uh, theme of uh, audience appreciation April. Uh, where uh, we are discussing films uh, brought to our attention and voted for upon by, uh, by Animacy Collections. So, uh, uh, but here in the room with me, I also have Roger, uh, 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 who I believe is going to be hosting the, uh, uh, this par uh, particular <laughs> discussion. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the film that we are going to be discussing? Well, well, thank you, Dave. Well, uh, the first thing that you need, need you need to all know about this film that um, on the tail of the season two of of Hurry Sesamia, it had gotten such a negative vibe that uh, uh, the Kyoto Animation decided to make an apology film, and this is what mm -hmm. happened. So they got their brilliant, you know, got the brilliant <laughs> minds and all the artistic flavors, and they made a gigantuan tour de force film I've ever seen in my life and I've seen a lot of anime but uh, the disappearance of Haruhi Sasamiya is like one of the few complete films I could think of. Very few of them actually can, actually can look at each character and they all had a role they all had uh, a, a beginning you know, beginning, middle and end and then to a very well done conclusion. So <clears throat> if there was ever a perfect movie uh, from uh, Kyoto Animation this is it. <laughs> you know, so, <laughs> basically, what um, this is this particular film takes place uh, like a little bit after you know the the the, the sigh of Haruhi Sasamiya. There's a it was based on a visual novel called The Disappearance of Haruhi Sasamiya, where uh, our lackluster host um, Kion wakes up one day and finds out that not quite everything is it true that's been that he thought was in Kansas was was here. Uh, everybody seems to uh, have forgotten that uh, our titler, uh, titler uh, heroine Haruri actually even even is known or even exists. Uh, he is uh, Kion is thrown into emotional turmoil, and this film kind of goes forward from that to a very interesting conclusion. Indeed. Oh my. Okay. I felt like we needed to have Haruhi represented in at least one of these discussions, or she would curse us all. <laughs> well, no, like like the, like the others, like the other the main show. Uh, this particular show shows a a alternate universe, an alternate reality that's that's been developed, and it, this particular one uh, was kind of, kind of comes from an unusual unusual place. Uh, we don't really find out until quite the end, but we're not going to talk about that yet. But, uh, but um, starting off with, uh, let's see. I think I'm going to go with uh, my buddy. Uh, let's go with Brandon this time. So, uh, was this the first time you've seen the the disappearance? Oh no, uh, I'd almost say. So I was, and of course, for those of you who want a little bit more on the background, uh, we did a discussion on my channel. Septum Sin versus the world with the same group. So uh, mm -hmm. for anybody who has a an extra interest into the backing of it, this would be a good uh, way of doing it. Mm -hmm. But uh, I first came upon it uh, actually because it came so much later on. I want to say that uh, Jacob was telling me about how wonderful it is, and I was trying to get a hold of a copy. I eventually got a hold of the DVD copy, and I managed to watch it for myself. And it really was a, a great movie. I have a couple of reservations on it this time around that I didn't have prior, but they're only minor gripes. Uh, I really like the film in most standards, and it really was what I had been wanting out of uh, <laughs> Haruhi Suzumiya. That uh, a lot of that I was disappointed by the um, well by the uh, second season. So as an apology for the second season, it did a very good job doing just that. Uh, very nice film. Kabuki Jake, what do you think? 
Well, for one, I'm not sure that this could necessarily be called an apology because it did come out the year after season two did. And as long as it takes to animate a nearly three-hour film <laughs> at this level, this was in production before the show Unless came Takahata out. Unless Takahata was running the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, then it would have been way before the show came out. They would have had this in production when the first series was being made. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh. well yeah uh, I honestly for the life of me this is not my first time seeing this I'm almost sure it's my third time seeing this for the life of me I can't remember how I got hold of it initially because uh, I know that I saw it prior to the 2011 Oscars. Uh, I know that I saw it as part of my prep for that. So if Brandon didn't get it for me uh, through streaming uh, or, you know, downloads or whatever, (laughs) I bought it, but that wasn't the first time I saw it. I'm almost sure I saw it on the computer first. I'm almost certain of that. I could be wrong. But whatever the case, I did buy it. (laughs) And... um, This one has always stuck in my mind for something that has very little to do with the show itself, but it will always, this one has always been one of the reasons and a previous uh, movie that we have covered on this channel, Summer Wars, both came out in 2010 and the, this was when the Oscars had that rule where 16 animated films they would do five nominees. The short list had 15 films. It somehow included Cats and Dogs 2, The Revenge of Kitty Galore, but they did not, (laughs) but they did not have Suzumiya Haruhi no Shusetsu on the short list. And because of that omission, they only had three nominees. And I swear that if the Oscars had nominate, had looked at Haruhi as a contender, Summer Wars would have been a nominee. And I guarantee you Tangled would have been a nominee. So I still, that kind of sticks in my crawl as one of the bigger gaffes that the Oscars have done. But it may have been Bandai Visual. It may have been Kato Kawa. It may have been Kyoto Animation. Whoever actually handled that process may have not even bothered to submit the film who knows but whatever the case i did see it in preparation for that i did watch it as soon as i could i know that i've seen my copy at least once before so again i think it's three times i this was my first time seeing it in a while and i watched it directly after the series I went through the broadcast order, the 2009 broadcast order, which is what Funimation has on the on the set for uh, Suzumiya Har- Harhi no Yutsu. Uh, and I I found that the broad the 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 chronological order really helped set up the movie nicely. Mm-hmm. Um, as much as I complained about not having the option of watching it the way it originally aired, I I like this as a preparation for the movie. It really set it up nicely. The film is a direct sequel to, I think it's episode 14 of the first season. Uh, it may or may not be important to watch it after that episode, but it's basically winter of that first year. And it has a very wintry vibe. My sick this time watching it, I felt that the film it was very downbeat, almost dreary at times. It's very much a slow burn film. I don't know that it needed to be nearly three hours long, but on the other hand, I didn't really mind being in this world for that long, you know? It was basically yeah. equivalent to watching six or seven episodes straight through. And it works for that. Um, 
I do admit it is one of the most gorgeously animated films I've ever seen. Keo Annie is just they are they are top of the line. And uh, yeah. and they really, really brought their A game on this movie. It is visually gorgeous. The music is very solid. Yeah. It's it's production wise, it's it's phenomenal. Uh, it just drags a little bit more than I would like, but but overall, it's still it's a really good movie. And and I admit, after Endless Eight, <laughs> this probably seems like a breath of fresh air for most people. <laughs> uh, unless you really love Endless Eight, <laughs> right? What about you, Dave? Uh, what do you what did you think? What was your uh, this was this your first time watching the disappearance of Ahuri Sasania? This this was my first time watching the disappearance of Aharohi uh, 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 Suzumiya, uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I just finished the last forty minutes while we were on the dis- uh, on the first discussion. <laughs> so, um, I can't, that's why I kept muting my, my uh, mic. So, uh, <laughs> as, as, so I was trying to. Uh, uh, trying to finish up that last. Well, you got it done. (laughs) So, uh, (laughs) having seen up to, in chronological order, at least to the third um, episode of the Endless Eight, (laughs) um, I, I, I think that you don't really have to really uh, go past that in chronological order to get the gist of the story, to be honest. You know the characters by that point. You know the characters by that point. You know the time uh, time dimension stuff. You know, you have your basic backdrop of the sto- uh, story of the characters. You, you just miss a little bit, a little bit if you don't. Uh, if, if you don't. But I thought the film was uh, 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 was pretty uh, pretty darn good. It wasn't as great as Stein's Gate was. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Deja Vu is a perfect movie, about as perfect as you can get. But you know, <laughs> considering considering that this movie is one of the longest anime movies I've ever seen, there might have been mm-hmm. one that was longer with uh, with, with Harlock. I oh. think may have had a hard, longer <laughs> movie. According to IMDb, this is the longest theatrical release in anime history, but the extended version of Final Yamato was one minute longer, and the extended (laughs) version of In This Corner of the World is six minutes longer. (laughs) This is the scale of how much quality that Kyoto animation put in this work. I mean, literally, when you look at it, you see the the parts of it that were done in in, the, in a higher frame rate. You could tell mm-hmm. that they were really trying to emphasize that there there were changes happening on that stair step, mm-hmm. on the doorknob, on the doorknob turning into and when Kyo, and when Kion was coming into the uh, into the club again, that something was going to happen anytime now. So this was this was mm-hmm. a there was, was this was a giggly type of show I was <laughs> waiting for. Uh, I was I had bought the Blu-ray from Bandai, and I think this one the last mm-hmm. uh, one the few uh, blu uh, Blu-rays you seen when they first you know towards the end of their career in the U.S. This was a big bow. They say, "Well, goodbye, mm-hmm. Bandai. This is your last last gift," and sure was a doozy. But it is annoying that their Blu-ray DVD combo came in a DVD disc. Yeah. I mean, case case. <laughs> I would have liked a Blu-ray case. You know. Yeah. It had a big, nice, big blue stripe around it too. Right. Right. <laughs> so it definitely, it definitely did, wasn't something yeah. that. So I thought it would be kind of cool to have a nice big case like. A, right. What was that? Uh, what was that one? Uh, the time travel lady. Was it a? Was oh it yeah. A, the, the girl left through time. The time. Yeah, 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 that one that had nice big That's blue a good blocks. One. Yeah, yeah. That's nice big big blocks, and you had the mm-hmm. another one, a couple other. Actually, ones that... that was one of Bandai's last Blu-ray releases, and that wasn't a Blu-ray case. I was so happy I bought that yeah, because before piece. fun before Funimation re-released it, that was going for two hundred bucks. Oh God, man, everything. Yeah, was, but, but now investment. that Funimation re-released it, not as much. Now, but that, um, now it's the Nowheresville, but down. <laughs> and I do want to say again for the Funimation Ultimate Collection, they don't have the movie. It's not that ultimate because you they don't have the movie in the collection. They, they leave a space for it. 
<laughs> not, but not really, but not really, Brandon. It's not really because no. when you, have to, you have to take something out of it to put this movie right. into it. You know, what's, what, and what does it take for these people to realize that when you have a right. collection box like this, yeah. you should make the box big enough to hold the whole shebang? Exactly. I mean, you know, the Sentai can do it. I mean, Bob, you know, I think I think sometimes with like um, some of these shows, like uh, what was it, uh, uh, you know, how not how not to uh, summon a demon lord? They kind of like like glued <laughs> the extra part that they forgot about and said, "Hey, we forgot this extra stuff. So let's just glue it." <laughs> yeah, let's just do it. Let's just do it that way. Oh, you just glue I mean, it on yeah. there, and people will forget about it. Ah, oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> nice, yeah. nice. Let's, let's paste this together with popsicle sticks. Absolutely. Yeah, there you go. There you go. People will never figure it out. <laughs> and, Actually, it is because of that exact thing that I have a drawer in my collection in my area that yeah. has all those little boxes and stuff in it. Yeah. So that I it have. Can, uh, uh, I have a um a, a banker's box that I throw riff like extra bits and pieces like you know the little the little post it that comes taped to the yeah. back of uh of steel books or things like that you know they get shoved in there um or yeah anytime you order a CD from Japan they have that wrap around you yeah, know and the it's little, like, the little I, plastic, yeah the little paper I, I part always... that goes around the end. Uh, yeah. When it comes to steel books and the uh, and the the, uh, the flaps that come on the backs of, the, of those, mm -hmm. I end up like putting a small piece of tape like on the top and the and the bottom just to keep uh, keep it. Ah, uh, that's so, one way to do it. <laughs> I'll sometimes put them inside, and usually I put them in that case. It depends. Like with Cowboy Bebop, I made it fit inside, but you know. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Dave, did you finish your impressions? Um. I liked the character building in, the, in here. Okay. It, 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 to me, to me, it's like uh, uh, they showed how annoying uh, uh, Haruhi uh, uh, as soon as it might, uh, could be, uh, be. But now you get to see a world without her. You, you know, right. so, uh, uh, so, uh, so, uh, so to me, it's like okay. <laughs> and then but, they uh, made an entire show based on that world. <laughs> the right. Of Nagato Yuki. <laughs> I've got but, four episodes done of that one. <laughs> I, I I like the movie better than I like the series. I, I have to <laughs> say. So, um, but I, I will continue to watch the rest of the ser uh, uh, series. And I'll probably Good pick deal. up the thir uh, third thing w once I get a chance, but. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 to, uh, to me, I saw enough of the sh uh, show that I can just let it sit on myself for a little bit till I mm -hmm. get to it. <laughs> <laughs> right. so, I mean, yeah, Live Live should be seen, if anything, uh, because right. it really is it really is a top-notch episode. I do agree with uh, Jacob on that. Probably my second that, favorite in the entire series. That concert sequence, they got almost the level of animation that they yeah. did. This movie, again, they really brought their A-game on the animation. And, I mean, again, whatever bastard set fire to their studio, that guy is a jerk. Oh, yeah. That was, oh, that was, was one of the great crimes of this century. He was mentally <laughs> ill, though, so, I mean. Yeah, but. Uh, and he's, anyway. getting, he's getting what he deserved for the crime, so I guess it's uh, in there. Right. Just sad of the people that died in there, right? And, uh, and of course, and uh, so my much respect was to lost. them. Yeah, oh, there yeah. was so much that was lost. Yeah, well, that's why I had to get Violet Evergarden because I knew that I need that series. I Actually, didn't that movie? <laughs> but didn't that movie come out last year officially? Yeah. Okay, so I and, need to uh, see. I need to watch that as for our before our thing in August. But anyway, <laughs> I need to see the series first. But whatever. Yes. Um. <laughs> so. Okay, so, uh, so uh, Davey you had your chance to discuss what you what you thought when on your first impression on the on the movie. Um, I was entertained by uh, by it. I I really liked it. I was I I, I was pleased by it uh, by it by the end. Uh, especially since, uh, uh, since the f uh, fact, like he's got the, uh, the 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 three women in his life, and uh, like the the, uh, the one that uh, that was all rob robotic and sh uh, shit, he he ended up wanting to uh, to fight for her existence, in in the end, uh, and uh, too. So I liked how it like brought it all together. 
you know. Oh. So, uh, 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 although you know, I didn't entirely expect his death, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, but uh, but um, it was uh, it was entertaining. I liked. It. Anytime okay. is involved, you know something weird is going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, moving on to the, you know, starting into, I guess, starting about the characters, we find out, you know, a little uh. bit later that, you know, <laughs> Kiln wakes up and he starts realizing that no, uh, nothing seems to be, you know, even though things are kind of like similar, uh, major components are missing. And he goes, you know, I kind of look, yes, sir? They did actually have a little bit of the normal in there first because they were setting yeah. up the uh, the Christmas party that they yeah. had. And Haruhi was going on about how the teachers won't mind me cooking because once they get a taste of my hot pot, they'll be <laughs> like... Uh, Asking for more. They'll be one over, yes. <laughs> Although, I admit, I really liked in uh, Nagato Yuki where she wants to catch Santa Claus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we do have a little bit of time. We did, we did have a little bit of time on normalcy, but uh, eventually uh, Kion wakes up and then uh, things start happening. And uh, oh, I kind of find it interesting <laughs> uh, that... Um, throughout the series, like, like, it kind of struck me that throughout the series, you know, I've been I'm watching Kion, he's the he's the one that has not been like emoting that, you know, let's go bananas, let's go crazy, oh my God, uh, let's run away, uh, let's uh, just resist as much as possible, because he's the guy that kind of went with the flow, you know, mm -hmm. he kind of says yes, okay, this is happening, this is not cool, but you know, I can go along with it. In this particular movie, he just resists everything. He just seems to just do just the opposite. Oh, he so, totally loses it. <laughs> absolutely, he starts he starts grabbing people, starts shaking people. He starts he starts uh, seeking out seeking out people that he thought that would help him. Finding then well, just finding out that he they were not knowledgeable of what they what they should have known in the other world. Well, they it's actually um, it's worth noticing. Like he starts off, he feels like the day's a little bit off. But he didn't really think much of it. And then it gets all the way up to, uh, I think it's all the way up to lunchtime. And there was like a vague reference that, oh, she didn't come in yet. She's, you know, she's late or whatever. And he's sitting there eating lunch with Kunikita. And Kunikita is in the seat that Haruhi always sat in. And then the door opens, but it's not Haruhi. It's Ryoko Asakura. Yeah. And... Um, and she comes in, and Kion just about loses it. But in his defense, yeah. the last time he saw her, as far yeah. as he knows, last time he saw her, she tried to kill him. I, <laughs> I, I'm not going to – I do not begrudge him the first freak out. Because, yeah. yes, that was deserved. I do like how on the second day he's talking to her, and he says, so are you going to try to kill me? And she's like, you need to go to a hospital. <laughs> but uh it's but i do agree that the, and that by the way is one of the creepiest parts of the series right she comes in there and she just basically tells him that she's going to kill him and i want you to die i want to see how hard he would react <laughs> and uh, that is a uh and uh, and that is there i do not think that I do feel it is a bit of out of character. It's probably my only uh, qualm with the movie as he continues the panic uh -huh. spell yeah. that, he, that it takes him so long to get himself together. Uh, Absolutely. Get it together. Get it together. Get it so. together. Absolutely. Because he, you know, this guy uncharacteristically, he just, he just decides that, you know, he needs to, you know, like literally try to interrogate people by force. And it finds out that you know nobody knows anything. Everybody's they don't understand mm -hmm. what's going on. 
he's getting increasingly, increasingly frustrated, think, uh, thinking mm -hmm. that everybody's crazy, but he is stuck somewhere strange. So it's it definitely it's a uncharacter uncharacteristic of Keon to, to to totally lose it and continue, like Brandon was saying, right. continue on and not analyze it like he normally would. Is it like that's like on the on the murder mystery on the island? Because well, he always <laughs> tre treated everything nonchalantly, like he didn't much care, and yet yeah. he was okay with going uh, with the blow with everything. Yeah, well, he'll, I think it was kind of he had resigned himself to the idea that if Hari he's around, Jen ain't going to be normal. But she's not around, and I think that's what freaks him out. Yeah, probably <laughs> got a good point with that because now they now it doesn't have anything that's similar to him, especially with Haruri not being there. That's the first thing he thinks about. You know, he definitely. Thought, Where's Haruri? Why is this? Uh, why is uh, Ryo, what the Ryoko? What name? Ryoko is back. The Ryoko is back in in, mm -hmm. <laughs> in stock back there when she got uh, got terminated the last right. time. So he was worrying about Ryoko. He also mm -hmm. was worrying about where's uh, where's Haruri, and then mm -hmm. he was thinking about uh, where uh, where am I? What happened? Yeah, right. And I guess. And then uh, what's up? I was gonna say I guess and again. And the thought crossed my mind, uh, thinking about maybe Haruhi was his anchor to the whole thing, and losing her is what was the source of, truly of the panic, because right. of his feelings for her, and how much that mm -hmm. he did love the character, uh, mm -hmm. albeit probably not to his admission. Um, he wouldn't admit it, no. But, he is uh, honestly a tsundere in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, because yeah, you're right. Because uh, uh, Keon is mostly an internal character. Uh, whatever conflicts he figures yeah. out on his own comes out differently from his mouth later on. You know, I, do think, was... I do feel like Keon, normally character-wise, would have calmed it down after the whole initial classroom thing. He probably wouldn't have uh, done all that stuff to, um... like, the assault Mikuru. <laughs> yeah, he probably wouldn't have assaulted Mikaru uh, normally. I think he would have managed to at least... He wouldn't necessarily have calmed down, but he would have at least... Okay, I just Push. need to pretend to be calm yeah, and, and then, then think about her. this rationally. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, like I, questioner and stuff like that. I do almost wonder uh, what would have happened if he had chosen the world where Nagato was, uh, was, in, fa uh, 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 was in fact <laughs> like the, uh, the, uh, the way... Th uh, things were in that world with her because they did uh, seem cute together, you know. I have an I have an answer for that. The, the disappearance of Nagato Yuki. Yuki. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that this oh. movie does move. This is yeah. like the precursor to that series. So, if you wanted to get a like mm -hmm. an idea what the disappearance of Yuki would be like, it literally is right. this world. You know, right. to, yeah. So that's that's something <laughs> to a degree. Could, to a degree, yes, it's a slight alteration, but most everything is. Yeah, it's it's that world. If things were fully normalized, I would think that if it was actually redone, if he had mm -hmm. actually decided to let the program slip and it was just totally altered, that would probably be what they would have ended up with. Right. <laughs> At the end of so, it. All. Basically, yeah. So basically, Yuki is no longer an alien and mm -hmm. she's still a quiet bookish girl mm -hmm. but she's more emotive she's very shy uh, mikuru is very similar to before but she has no memory of kion and so she's a little bit freaked out by him and she's not um, from the future <laughs> hmm? and she's not from the future <laughs> right right and uh Saruya is pretty much the same. Mikuru's friend who's very defensive of her. Um, and then you got he, there's no Haruhi and there's also no Koizumi. Um, he yeah. is nowhere to be found. So, not until later. Not until later. Not until later, exactly. Hmm. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Okay, so um, as as we as we as we find out uh, as we go on with the movie, uh, mm -hmm. Kion uh, eventually he he decides to con he, he thinks about the the SOS room, 
Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So and and uh, this room, it kind of like in the series, kind of slowly becomes a place, a focal point of the series where people tend to when the when the SOS team kind of gathers there it has a it's like a mystical power point or power place <laughs> or power place. Right. So it kinda of, of goes back there and it's and the one thing you find the first thing he finds there is of course is uh Yuki. And it, and he finds out and he of course walks in there and decides that uh Yuki is still the person he thought that he thinks he is or she is. And she says, No, I'm not. You're 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 mis- misunderstood. But uh, uh, kind of interesting how even uh, even as he as he you know forcibly uh, finds himself trying to make Yuki remember something that she she claims she doesn't know anything about, he kind of calms down for a bit, right? And then he yeah. decides to sit down, hang out, and for and for whatever reason, Yuki decides to to kind of like you know start a relationship with Kion at at that at that particular moment. I found I found that to be kind of an interesting turning point uh, because of, of since because you know even though that uh, Yuki in the normal world would have defended uh, Kion to the to, to you know with her with her life like she she tried to in the, in, in the others in the other world right. in this world she actually connects to him kind of like emotionally right you know, this like, is where uh, she offer she offers him a literature club uh, application right. Yeah. In the same manner that that uh, it kind of like in the same manner that Harumi did, he just kind of gives him <laughs> gives him here you go, and of course now he has no choice but to eventually capitulate, and say so, yeah I guess I'll join up, and also you also but with see, far less confidence than Haruhi was. <laughs> oh for sure, but you do have the uh, interesting another interesting moment because you actually see Yuki's first smile. Not too much. Right. Not too, not too much longer. Uh, later. Uh, later in the show. So well, um, this definitely is something. Something that people. <laughs> uh, people on the show would would recognize that something. Something is more is going on between uh, Yuki and and uh, Kion. Then you don't really see that much in the regular show. And one could right. say that uh, that Yuki, uh, in her own way. Did have an affection, did have affection for Kion, even in the uh, less uh, less emotional version, but she really didn't have any outlet to uh, express it. Well, you eventually find out that's what triggers this story. Yeah. Um, spoilers, everyone. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yuki wanted we didn't to... say that in the last episode, but I guess it doesn't matter because the opening line of Grave of the Fireflies is a spoiler. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Uh, yeah. Very much so. <laughs> well, okay, and of course, uh, and as what do you think, Dave? Uh, the, uh, what do you think about uh, what what happened in the, uh, between Kion and uh, and Yuki? <laughs> I I think you see a little bit of a, 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 a more of a possible relationship there, uh, a, 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 like a boyfriend girlfriend type relationship, uh, where like the beginning romantic aspect of it, you know, because mm-hmm. they're walking uh, home and she invites him uh, uh, to her uh, her home. And you think that they're going to have this nice little quiet like dinner, then all of a sudden, mm-hmm. boom. So uh, 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 the other <laughs> girl that uh, uh, shows up uh, 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 up and kind of spoils the mood, and he's about to leave, <laughs> but well, she uh, she grabs his arm and she looks all cute, and uh, you know he's like, "Well, I guess I can stay." And, I gotta no. say how bold that was uh, a move. Right. Yeah, come up to my apartment. It's just uh, right. Very, it, very crazy. In in yeah. this series, in the series, he visits her apartment many times. Yes, but yes. I think if I were rem- remembering correctly, if I'm remembering correctly, at this point, he thinks to himself, "This is the first time he's walked home with her." Um, so that yeah. am I remembering yeah. that correctly? Yeah, because yeah. I don't remember Wait. them ever walking home with each other. They're right. always either at yeah. the school Not- or at their at the at the apartment at Yuki's uh, Yuki's right. apartment. 
Right. Not, not like this, at least, at least where they, exactly. they are actually going in the same direction at the same time. Right. So, uh, well, yeah. he has no uh, no one else to hang out with. Uh, I mean, everyone he knew right. is, is like gone or or it changed. Changed. Yeah. So, uh, so well, technically, uh, his relationship. He could have walked home with his friends. He could have walked technically, home with his friends. Technically, Kuni Kid and Taniguchi are the same as before, but it's like uh, they don't have the same memories he does. So that's Nor the, the uh, same relationship as Jeff, and, because by the time uh, by, by the time the end of the se uh, series arise, uh, arises, he's been spending time with the SOS Brigade. Right, right, right. Uh, so, and actually, so that is actually that's one of the weird things that I don't think we mentioned. Uh, Taniguchi the day before the change was going on about, oh, I got a big date with a girl from this academy and all I say he's like full of life and whatever. And then he's and then that day he's got the mask on and he's really sick and ends up going to the nurse's office for the whole day. And it's like and then and and then that was one of the first clues Keon had was that there was this cold all through the school. Oh, that yeah. wasn't there the day before. Well, so and to like, me, it kind of mm -hmm. sounded similar to something like COVID. Uh, to, uh, to me, a little bit. They said that it imitated flu or some uh, some shit like that. So yeah, um, yeah. I thought well, that colds was... in Japan are. I think they look at a cold much uh, much like we would look at a flu today. Because right. if you look at how if you look at how colds are illustrated in many animes. They usually are accompanied by fever, unconsciousness, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And, uh, you know, it's also a, colds don't do that. No, it's also a frequent thing, which is kind of weird to us Americans because it violates our rights and all that crap. But, like, you watch any anime, the sick people are wearing masks. That's oh, yeah. Well, that's frequent. That's, just a, that's, that's a general yeah. that goes into yeah. our Grave of the Fireflies discussion, which yeah. is that, uh, in in those cultures, a lot of the times is the idea of consideration towards others and to the whole right. is outweighed by the consideration of the individual. Whereas in our culture, the individual outweighs the whole. If you have COVID, it doesn't matter if you give COVID to everybody else around you because you're the one that matters. Right. For them, if you've got COVID, you don't want to give it to anybody around you because you're hurting the society as a whole. Right. That's the that's where the difference comes. <laughs> right. But I will admit a little bit of personal amusement that Taniguchi had his that his reality was changed in that way. Cause he is basically in the series, he is basically the pervy friend character. I mean, that's really his role. And Kion usually kind of gives him the brush off in the same way he wishes he could with Haruhi. Oh. <laughs> so even though they're friends. So it was kind of interesting seeing that. But again, Kunikita, there was no change at all until he realized how different their memories were. Because that was yeah. a big difference. <laughs> It's probably yeah, about the, I, it starts talking about the cold and the, and the recent events and the addition of Ryoko. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> no one remembered her transferring. You know, of course, Kion knew what really happened to her, but everyone else should have thought she transferred. So, yeah, <clears throat> that was kind of weird for him. <laughs> well, yeah. she, was never a th she was never a data entity that... Uh, or alien at that point, exactly, so. and she never tried to kill him that we know. Well, of. at least at, <laughs> at least until this point, anyway. Right, <laughs> right. She's still creepy as hell in, in this. Though she kind of is. Good, they do a good job of making her much more of a humanized character here, and and in Nagato Yuki, they do a good job of it because. Right. I, she she doesn't try to, at least to my knowledge, uh, kill uh, Kion in that series. She has an interesting uh, c comp competitive streak with Tsuruya, but you know. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, 
I still like her representation in Haruhi Chan, <laughs> where she's basically Yuki's pet. <laughs> That was a, that's the one part that was really amusing in the in the in the series that she was like the uh, the shrunken the shrunken buddy pet <laughs> that right. so was ever trying to escape but finding out that she if she did escape she's in trouble. <laughs> yeah. She, was, uh, she always wanted that relationship with Keon. <laughs> now, anyway, kind of moving uh, on, kind of moving uh, on forward a little bit. Um, right. Did did anybody uh, kind of notice that there's an odd parallelism parallelism in this world versus the other world, uh, like the the meeting in the library for a uh, 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 right of a uh, oh, yeah. and then how uh, how uh, Kion also meets uh, kind of kind of has the same kind of event, and other characters had similar events. It's almost as if both worlds were running at the same time. Well, well, there definitely are some similarities. Um, and, and in this version, Yuki remembers that Kion was some random guy who helped her get her library card. Yeah. Whereas in the original version, they had been sent by by Haruhi to look for uh, a weird stuff. phenomena or whatever. <laughs> And she got busy reading a book and wouldn't leave the library until he made her a card. <laughs> so she could come yeah. back and check it out. Exactly, yes. I do like how they revisit that <clears throat> in, um, in Yuki-chan, right. uh, where they have a uh, version of, well, current Yuki, like the uh, Yuki that's uh, kind of emotionless. And she's sitting there in the library uh, 10 more minutes. Uh, it's like, well, the library closes in 10 minutes. Oh, to nine more minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are That's people like that. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> but, and yes, some of those things were, again, very similar. But um, eventually, of course, we do uh, have the thing where uh, Kion. What was it? It was um was it Kunikita? Who was it that let him know where Haruhi was going to school? Oh yeah, his friend. Kunikita, his friend yeah. they were talking during lunch and I think yeah. they, they were talking about Haruri and says, Oh his friend said, Oh yeah, I know her in passing. And or it might have been like, Tanaguchi. Yeah, it was and Tanaguchi kind of, and uh, yeah. he actually gave the same speech that he gave at the beginning of the series about her because he knew her ah. because again the past was the same right but it altered at the but the way that she altered it right. was back at the three year mark uh, so the thing that. about her making that weird message on the school grounds was basically the speech you're talking about right yeah she yeah. was communicating there here i am to the alien right right <laughs> right and of course, I think at this point, Keon knew that he was the one who helped her with that thing. Oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, his, his <laughs> alternate persona of uh, John Smith would come to play a couple more times. Right. As a, as a powerful way of, uh, of deterrence of the thought entities to do anything more right. other than observe and do some little bit of shenanigans. Other than that, because as, soon, right. as, he, some, as soon as he mentions John Smith, Harui would realize that Kion is actually the person right. he met three years ago. And God knows what would happen. Who knows? And what was it? Uh, Ki, is it Kion Academy? I think it is. Something along those lines. Yeah. And but, let's not forget that she does find the bookmark prior to that. Right. Where, she does. Where uh, there was a message from Nagato in the yeah. bookmark, much in the same book that she had originally chosen the hyperion i think it was called. bring bring all the keys together and i don't remember the rest of it but that was the program <laughs> will, and to activate the program right uh, right and, and so be. he goes to the school and stakes it out trying very hard not to be obvious <laughs> which of course never works the more you try not to be obvious <laughs> the more you are you, yeah and then, of course, he sees Haruhi, and who's with her but Kozumi. Yeah. And he manages to somehow catch her interest 
like the guard comes up like who are you why are you harassing these students or whatever <laughs> and he manages to catch Haruhi's interest and she ends up basically saving him from the guard and they oh, go yeah. off you know have a drink together well he I say to, have a drink together you know what he, I mean <laughs> he has to invoke uh, John the John Smith, Smith because yes. uh, otherwise John Smith. But you can see on her face how dissatisfied she is with life with I this mean, world because right. it's so boring and normal she wants right. to be, she still is Haruri she wants right. something spontaneous wonderful uh, wondrous yeah, as you can new. see from my, as you can see from my image there, which if I remember correctly, was after they'd been at the coffee shop for a bit, talking for a bit, and then Kion somehow sparked her interest, and she just <laughs> lets it. She explodes, <laughs> and I think that was from that scene. And yeah, she yeah. just. She was like, yeah, I always thought it was, you know, she thought there was something more. But in this world, she's not a god. She's just an eccentric girl who's bored with life. And and and, and Koizumi is there because he was the, quote, mysterious transfer student. And, and yes, Brandon, I did get to the point in Nagato Yuki that you mentioned that was basically a re-examination of yeah, that, that scene thing, yeah. where basically Kion and, and, and Kozumi are talking and he's like, yeah, she glomped onto me because I was the mysterious transfer student, but I think she's already losing interest. Yeah, well, she could tell kind of <laughs> yeah. at the same level because she was right. kind of, she looked bored. Yeah, I also like how in the conversation where he's talking about well how she, she couldn't. Uh, it's like how did she not realize all that stuff? I was like she's like yeah, the other means an idiot, and uh, <laughs> she just yes. Up yes. Well, like this think- horror, he is not. I guess it's because people don't walk on eggshells around her. Yeah, but she's not as. Full of herself is the other one is. She's still bossy. She's still selfish. She's still unbelievably off the cuff. Like she she works on a whim. <laughs> but it she's a little bit more likable in the movie than she is in the series beca- because she doesn't have all these people kotoing to her every whim. You know, and I, I, I think that is the main reason why, honestly. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, move. I guess in this case, uh, we have to move uh, move right along. You know, because uh, next next what happens um, in the in the story, um, it kind of like kind of goes back and forth. Because remember, Keon is trying to find all the different keys. Right. You know, he finds it. Remember, they find the the, the bookmark. Uh, now he has to. Now he has to find a way to get back to his normal world. And even though he does like this world, he still misses Harui and all the spontaneousness well, of the other world. After this meeting, she happily leads the charge back to the club room. Like basically, she is like, I want to see this place. And she literally, and she actually re uh, re reestablishes the SOS brigade exactly in the, in the same place because yes. it, it was it was definitely was a requirement for the magic to happen again. You had to have mm-hmm. the classroom, you had to have the club room, it had all it had other people gathered together. Mm-hmm. So this yep. whatever program that uh, Yuki made, you know, the from the original world could possibly make mm-hmm. the well, Kion's. Uh, leave this particular reality to go back to his mm-hmm. original reality. Yeah. Now I'm trying so. to remember. I'm drawing a blank here. But I'm trying to remember. Was Haruhi the one responsible for bringing Asahina back into the club room? I feel like she yes. would have been. Yes, yeah, she that's what I was thinking. Into, she does exactly what she does in the series. She goes directly into the calligraphy the- club. The yes. <laughs> <laughs> At Kyom's suggestion. Mind you, uh, well, I don't know if he suggested suggestion. that you grab her. Well, yeah. uh, well, <laughs> no, well, uh, well, no. He pointed out the ro- a room that she was in, and she ah, yes. he turned back to him and uh, said, "Is that her?" Yes, <laughs> yes, you're right. You're right. Yeah. 
so and, and, and then he's like, I'm sorry, Miss Miyuki. <laughs> but, so he did have a little bit of a hand in in, in the uh, the kidnapping of uh, Miss Miyuki. Uh, Miyuki uh, there. Right. <laughs> now, I, I have to just interject here that I absolutely love uh, the version in Nagato Yuki where uh, Haruhi <sighs> keeps showing uh, showing up with a dolly cart with new stuff for the club yes. room, and she shows up with a dolly cart with Asahi on it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was like, and wow. They, and they used the exact same way, though, in both the series. <laughs> And how they originally get in. Of course, later on, they uh, she basically says, "Oh well, yeah, I uh, eventually just used my charm to get the teachers to give me a pass." Uh, but right. uh, she originally does use the exact same thing of dressing in the gem clothes uh, to get in there. But we mm -hmm. did forget one major piece uh, mm -hmm. with Keon uh, is that he actually. Uh, he actually had an internal dialogue with himself to understand uh, what it was that he wanted. Mm -hmm. And that was, uh, I think that was actually integral to uh, his being able to actually make the decision. Talking to himself in the mirror and truly understanding, I mean, he had to come to a, to a truth of himself, understanding that, yes, I did like the craziness. I do miss it all. I do want to be in the world that I was in. It took right. that to really get him to act. He had to act. He had to do. He had to do what many Sundere characters have to do, which is truly come to uh, come to terms with their own feelings. Right. Yeah. Okay. Actually, that's one thing that we I, did not really mention in the discussion last night, but it's notable. We were talking about Kellen as sort of a blank slate character, and I'm sitting there thinking, like, I don't fully buy that relative to most shows that I've seen. But as far as the male protagonist, quote-unquote, blank slate... One of the things that makes him notable is that he really is sort of a Sundari character, and that's very rare for those kind of characters. It's very rare that they are that dishonest with their feelings, even though he's very blunt with the things he says. It's kind of... It, it, it's obvious that he has a greater affection for Haruhi than he'll let on. <laughs> now, now, now he does. Uh, uh, right. Specifically in the beginning. I mean, and at the end right. of the uh, uh, end of the sh uh, show, of course, he's grown attached to all of those that are involved in the SOS uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Brigade. Unwillingly uh, and reluctantly, as it were, but uh, but, uh, but I don't think he had come to that realization how much he cared for all those in his life. So I yeah. think that, uh, that is why this movie is detrimental to his character. Uh, what makes him like those around him enough to have them in his world? I don't mm -hmm. know why, but I thought you were going to say SOB. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of is. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> That's probably his nickname for it. <laughs> SOS. Uh, -S. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, there's a song. <laughs> well, I, I I know the song "Sob." That's a good song. I like that one. <laughs> now, in the in the in the movie, um, we also find out that again the event from three years ago it was the comes mm -hmm. comes comes around again. Right. And he and this and this event has to be redone. You know, the mm -hmm. uh, the he has to to circle back. To and we return back to Haru again with Asahina <laughs> in a in a weird show 
to uh, to re-engage what and why was the why was the three, of course I never I don't I, don't, I never did really understand why the three the, the three years ago was so it had to be three years ago why couldn't it have been four or, or uh, some other event what where this when this event happens but well, it is a fact that three years ago that this starts event yes sir i know why the three years ago was so important because the powers that she had did not activate until three years ago but the powers were activated because Kion was the one who actually managed to activate them he really was the one who activated her true spirit and joy in life he gave her uh, a purpose for living and whatever forces actually recognize that uh <laughs> went to town on uh, and helped her out john smith. Right. Uh, john smith i am john here. smith yes and i wonder if uh, if that was on purpose or by uh, by, uh, by accident uh, that uh, they used John Smith, which John Smith was the uh, the turning point in Pocahontas' life. So I, I think, think it was it probably a common American name. <laughs> that's what I was thinking. It was probably because it's such a common name, but you might be there. Might be something more to it. It's possible there's something more to it. I was thinking, you know, because we've already mentioned Steins Gate, and of course you have the character John Titor in that one. Ooh. And uh, so, so again, John is clearly thought of as a very common name, which it is. It's, uh, it is. it's ungodly common name. John and Brown um, Smith. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> John Brown. Or, or like John Michael Smith or something like that. You probably couldn't get any more generic than that. Uh, you could definitely <laughs> like, lose yourself. You could lose your identity <laughs> easily by using those three, those couple right. of names. Yeah, you wouldn't um, be found ever again. John <laughs> Malcolm yeah. Smith. What's that? John Malcolm Smith. <laughs> John Malcolm Smith. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I don't know if there's any like real true significance other than it being a common name. But you never know; there might be. Um, I think. But yeah, yeah, I think I think you're. I think Brandon. I think you're right. I think it's that that magic. Uh, ma like the, it's no accident that Keon keeps coming back to that evening. I mean, it's there's no accident there. Yeah. Um, it's kind of strange. It's at least, it's at least, a, a, technically, this will be the one, two, maybe in the fourth time we're coming back to that particular place, because they had gone back at least twice in the in the first time around in the first universe, and now you had to come back again on this twice again in the beta universe. <laughs> I guess I'll call Ooh. it beta, or the 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 uh, Nuki Chan, uh, right. because. Uh, this nothing could have started for all this stuff if if uh, Kion did not meet Harui three years ago, painting, <laughs> uh, painting the chalk right. drawing to say to the aliens that I'm here. Which is uh, one of the strange hieroglyphics pitfalls. Too. Yeah. It's one of the pitfalls of time travel stories. Is the whole chicken and the egg scenario? Yeah. It's kind of like. Okay, uh, did all this, if what? this is contingent on this, and this is contingent on someone traveling back from the future, yeah, yeah I always wonder about those. That's one of the reasons I'm not as big on time travel as I could be. Marty, but, we've got to get back to the future. Exactly. <laughs> to the future, Exactly. But if you're uh, if you don't like spend Marty, hours do on hours space time continuum. <laughs> if you don't spend like hours and hours and hours dwelling on it, and you just let it ride, then it's fun. <laughs> it's called it's called suspension of disbelief. Exactly. Yeah. Because if you can believe that uh, any of the stuff happens in that series, that happens. I think a little time travel suspension of disbelief is fine. <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, actually, I mean, this is one of the cool things about Harisuzmiya is that she believes in everything. 
And actually, there's a moment in Nagatoyuki where she's trying to explain. I think it's the whole Santa Claus thing. She's trying to explain, and she says something to the effect of, well, can you prove that he doesn't exist? <laughs> because if he doesn't, that's why I want to catch him, to prove one way or the other. And it reminded me a little bit of Kafka Fura from uh, Sayonara Zetsuba Sensei, that whole exchange where uh, where Zetsubo Sensei kept, uh, Itoshiki kept asking her all these things, and she kept going, the possibility exists. The possibility exists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And and it's like, oh yeah, I, I, I'm thinking, I'm thinking Kafka, 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 Kafka. Yeah. yeah, she says because she's internally yeah. positive. It's, it's the she, you could possibly yeah. do it. Yes, you could yes. possibly do this. Yes, you can. Yes, <laughs> and that of course yeah. had the best. That had the best follow up ever, where you had the teacher saying like. You had, where he had challenged him to do a despair survey instead of a goal <laughs> oh, survey, yeah, awesome. where you need to do like the things you will never be, and then he's like, "You've got this great class. They're they've got such high goals, but I worry about this." <laughs> yeah, about Kevin because she want she, she don't want to uh, be an alien. She want to yeah, God. And a, an alien, a <laughs> Polaroid, <laughs> whatever the hell that is. She can't be with those three things. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, it, it, it is a travesty that uh, uh, Saranata, Subzusu, whatever, Sub, Subzusu Sensei never did come to America. The, the oh. anime never did come to America, even though the, the like manga did. That's the true tragedy, actually. And the complete manga never made it to the United States. No, so. it didn't. Del Rey f uh, flaked out. So I think we only got like eight eight volumes out of how many there was. There's, God knows how many of those things were, but it never did to get, get the complete story from that. Yeah. I have the complete manga release that they have here in the States, which is sad that they didn't release it, but at least it's one you can kind of sit on and go... Uh, it doesn't really have any sort of uh, linearity to it. <laughs> so you, you can, you know, you can stop at any point. <laughs> but now, yes. Another, uh, now another interesting ahead. point I wanted to point out, you know, when the Yuki uh, writes the program on the piece of paper from the, you know, from the, from the original world, has those strange hieroglyphics on it, it makes no sense. It's kind of interesting how the 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 Haruri actually draws something kind of similar to that, you know, just indecipherable. It's almost as if that she made up a language and then the thought entity became uh, became part of their language system. I wondered, I always wondered about that. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if Haruhi herself created the thought entity, uh, because again. A lot of that stuff, it goes back to that three years. I think everything there could be, again, Haruhi's an odd one. I mean, you could go with the, the concept that she is that god, that they are simply a reality that is a dream of hers. And it can't yeah. be a dream of hers if uh, if everything that she know, everything she knows has to be involved in there because you can't go with stuff she doesn't know because stuff she doesn't know couldn't be possible for her to dream. Indeed. <laughs> And that, the time travel is not possible po uh, before that time as well. It doesn't interest. I guess that's always this part has been interesting to me for, uh, with this particular series. There's a whimsical time that can, uh, they, uh, that occurs at a certain point in time where everything everything starts and restarts again. It's you can almost argue that Haruri had actually remade the world at that time because. You know, you know, we don't know because well, they can't go past the time travel. Can't go past that time. Well, uh, and uh, you can obviously see that this show was uh, 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 was definitely influenced by Groundhog's Day, just a little bit. <laughs> well, one could say that uh, that uh, Endless Eight was, if anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would say so. It will happen. I don't know. <laughs> we lost. You, I buddy. lost my net. I lost my net here for a bit. I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, we we, oh. we made some amazing points while you were gone. Uh, I'm we, sure you did. Yes, a, we did some existential oh. uh, thought oh. process. And actually, uh, it's appropriate because I have Haruhi Suzumiya as my icon. I had to disappear for part of the program. <laughs> <laughs> 
Okay. Mm. Oh, well, Ooh, uh, now the next thing that the the group has to do is to get uh, to get uh, Kion back to his own universe, right? Mm -hmm. So oh. they have they uh, right now they have found this uh, uh, some sort of program that they have to inject into uh, Yuki to make this program run so they can mm -hmm. bump out of this universe and go back to the other universe. You know, mm -hmm. Some sort of strange yeah. uh, injector gun and stuff like that, or a little shooter right. gun. Well, well, they put it, well, it was originally service. going to be a hypodermic needle, and uh, yeah. I think it was Kion was like, I can't do that. So Yuki makes it do this weird sort of gun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, I think he said something like, what if I miss, or something like that. Because admittedly, a needle, you got to no. be kind of on, you got to be on I, point. <laughs> what if I end up putting it somewhere that I don't really want it to go? Right. Which, uh, that's uh, 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 and to me, I thought uh, I th uh, thought, uh, what if uh, what if he accidentally stuck him in the ass with it? Or something like that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right? Because that's always the ne a needle that you don't really want when you go to the doctor. Okay, bend over. <laughs> right. <laughs> I felt, uh, and it is sad because it's one of the two times that I really feel sorry for Nagato because it's it's their one chance to actually be more than just a thing right. and, just, a, uh, just a terminal yeah and you feel you really do feel bad because especially when uh, mm -hmm. i feel bad for her in a couple parts of the movie uh and this was one uh, especially now it does get cut short by something else that comes up right after that mm -hmm. but uh mm -hmm. yeah it, it was still a very sad thing that that was going to happen but you also involved the uh adult asahina who right. was uh, <clears throat> actually played a huge part in it afterwards i mean she stuck with them basically up until the end of that portion um once they actually went back to the past of course, it was interesting that uh, even as an adult, Asahina was still uh, uh, nervous around Yuki. She didn't, didn't uh, kind of scared of her a little bit, which is kind of like, oh, well, <laughs> she's powerful. Yeah, Asahina is still Asahina. She still right. always will be clumsy, and she'll she's a little bit more mature. She's a little more forth, you know, for yeah. you know, not too much forthwith in saying oh, that everything is clumsy. classified. Not right. as many things classified, to be sure. Exactly. <laughs> she, she simply doesn't talk about it. But yeah, right. but we do we do meet uh, the adult uh, the adult Mi, uh, Miharu again, and uh, then she, I have to go, we go to another another time travel stint. We have to go back right. time again to another, uh, to the three years again, that they meet again with Huri mm. again. It's just it's just it's an unending loop with this particular series, which is pretty cool because right. it's just a simultaneous type of this happened here and then of course it happened mm -hmm. it happened again in the other universe. Mm -hmm. It's kind of hard to find out what what is the beginning was to end by the <laughs> by this time. You're just gonna have to mm -hmm. let it go. And like I think uh, uh, Brandon said that there's a certain point where you're gonna have to say, well, it just happened. Exactly. So, you just forget about the logic and the grandfather, you know, grandfather clause or the multi-universe approach and all that. Yes, Brandon? Right. So when all of you watch this for the first time, and Dave, you're the one who's had it freshest. Did, okay, it gets to that point and you're kind of like gritting your teeth because n most of the time you don't really want to uh, sit there and, and see that, that, you know, the poor innocent Yuki kind of get her dream shattered oh, did you get to did, did any of the other ones get quite surprised when when uh, he gets stabbed in the back at that point uh i or, I, I was surprised that he got stabbed in the back at, at like at, at like i didn't expect that you know it, it, it wasn't it, i mean I guess at the end of the day, now that I think uh, uh, think about, about it, 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 it was bound to happen and uh, bound to be be, be a, 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 the turning point uh, to uh, help um, Kion in making his choice about which world he to. wanted to stay in. I mean, if he stayed any longer, I think the worst would have happened. 
Oh, right. and she had to stab him in the back sometime, right? I mean, that's that's what the character. Well, you know, it, right, it and this is where we this is where we see uh, this is where we see Asakura as a pseudo yandere character, where she's mine, and if you do anything to hurt her, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to do anything to hurt her. <laughs> Stabby, stabby. <laughs> stabby, stabby. Yes, they it, actually, that's one thing that I find amusing in most of the series. They make a reference to her, uh, uh, her uh, skill with blades and her <laughs> interest in, in, in blades. <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, I will admit that's one part that I still kind of have to. I have to work a little to wrap my head around like, okay, so did he bleed out there? Did, you know, they, oh. everyone else remembers him falling down the stairs and hitting his head. So I'm guessing like it's kind of strange how that all plays out. It's, uh, I'm assuming it means he reset the timeline and everyone yeah. just remembers it differently, but it's it's kind of weird, you know. Well, you see, that's another story they were going to set up for the future. He even says it. Yeah, it's like, well, I'm going to eventually have to go back and and do this uh, at some point, but not right now. Right. And uh, I, I think those are answers that we would get uh, a, as we go in the future. Mm -hmm. So okay. when they uh, when they when they animate the intuition of Haruhi Suzumiya, maybe we'll get those answers. Who knows? Exactly. That's the, that's the <laughs> I can always ideas. hope for a third season. Yeah, I can always <laughs> hope for it. Maybe there'll be another one. Uh, well, yeah, it is a possibility. I think that the movie kind of helped the, restore some good faith, but unfortunately, it's been so long. I don't think that the fervent uh, love of the fans is as present as it was when they started season two. I still feel like they well, Kyoani trolled the fans on purpose with Endless Eight. Well, um, again, I think uh, I think Intuition's publication date was last year or the year before, so yeah. that's still fairly fresh. So if the wonder, author is back doing the story... That could breathe new life into the franchise, definitely. And didn't they have some stories in the short uh, in the novels that they had not covered? Um, I believe so. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you could easily go back to the well. It's uh, and it's I know that matter. um, I know there's a side story for Koizumi that I don't think they've done an anime for. I'm not sure if that'll ever happen, but that might happen. Who knows? <laughs> I'd like to see another. Uh, I'd like to see another season of Nagato Yuki, even though I doubt it. It didn't perform as well as it should have. No. Uh, but uh, but still, I would like to have seen another season right. of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's one of it's kind of one of those shows where you know there's there's a there's a progression. And right. And eventually, you know, that uh, eventually the he was successful getting to back back into the world again. Uh, mm -hmm. He ha he has to uh, he kind of finds himself. Oh well, I'm back in my world again, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna go up to I go and see and go see the classroom again and see and see the, the club room again. Um, and he also kind of uh, kind of thinks he also reestablishes that. Uh, he understands what what Keel is kind of understanding what what things are how how things are working in the universe I guess uh, because he does it does a, does he does give some sort of comfort to Yuki that if anything ever ever uh, the thought entity ever ever do anything he would yeah. invoke <laughs> invoke the protection of Hurry Sisamia <laughs> I said they should just rewrite everything <laughs> rewrite everything. Which is and pretty let's cool. Not I thought it was pretty cool. <laughs> let's also not uh, skip the fact that in the hospital, uh, you can see that she does not leave his uh, side from right. the time he he goes there. He, she's the only one. Of course, 
in the Sundere fashion, you know, I didn't do it because it was you. Uh, yeah. I, you know, I did it because you're my precious you know, you're, brigade member. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But uh, obviously, it's because it's him, and she was extremely upset. Right. And of course, seeing uh, seeing all Asahina's reaction, of course, being the obvious one, where she just like breaks down in tears as, as she always does. Yeah. Uh, I just thought that was also it was also great seeing those reactions. Uh, you can see how much uh, Har he does care uh, in her way. <laughs> it's uh I think it's a it's a great return to the world, so to speak. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I like to uh, uh I, I don't know why uh, why but uh, but when she wakes up and she can't get out of her sleeping bag. That is fucking funny as all hell. Right. She's like hopping about. <laughs> and, and she almost looks like a caterpillar or something. Well, yeah, she has one of those full body sleeping bags that uh, just kind of wraps around. <laughs> so, I hope you didn't yeah, find I anything never, on my forehead. She right. considered it, but uh, it was uh, hmm. actually, though, I, can, I have to say that uh, I like, uh, I've never been in one of those sleeping bags before that were that hard to get out of. I've always been in sleeping bags that were uh, pretty easy to get out of. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I admit, it'd probably keep you warm. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, yeah. The, um, I believe the same sleeping bag that she had on the park bench when she was trying to catch Santa. But I, I could be wrong. But It looked very familiar. And she, <laughs> I could see this uh, this movie as a Christmas movie as well because it's yeah. it starts out in December and, and yeah. they're uh, they're preparing for the par uh, party and they're still preparing for the party at the end of the, uh, at the right. movie. In fact, uh, Haruhi uh, or Haruhi, uh, she uh, uh, she exacts her revenge uh, by making him wear a Santa. Uh, Elf suit, I guess. Reindeer suit, Reindeer I believe. Reindeer suit, um, for three days or uh, whatever. So, uh, so I, th <laughs> I think uh, 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 I think uh, that's kind of uh, detrimental to the Christmas spirit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, she's all about the Christmas spirit. I'm telling. You. Yeah, she she's she's all about everything that. Even uh, though it was backwards on the window. <laughs> oh, she doesn't think things through always. Uh, she, she's not very. Uh, she's very impulsive. <laughs> yes. Yes. Indeed. All right. Does anybody have any additional thoughts about any of the characters we had in the, in the movie? Mm. It would have been nice if they had more Shamison. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that was we funny. Actually, how he do get a lot of that. He goes in and is like, uh, "Hey, uh, you're supposed to talk. I need to talk to the cat." <laughs> yes, it was that and part. I love, yes, I love how he just carries his little sister underneath his arm and it, it just scoots her out the door, and, and she's like, "Mom, uh, uh, Kion right. has gone crazy." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is kind of interesting because in the whole series, I don't recall that there were any references to parents living with them. But in this one, definitely the sister makes several references to that. Uh, I just thought that was kind of interesting. I couldn't remember. Uh, I wonder if anyone remembers something I don't. But, <laughs> but yeah. I had kind of assumed they were just living together, um, you know, without anyone else. But until the cat come along, obviously. <laughs> but, well, thank God for the cat. Exactly. Well, well, the cat is the awesome. real mastermind uh, behind the whole you, thing. You just well, like obviously. Any, you just like any cat that shows up in an animation, don't you? Well, I'm, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the cats are <laughs> awesome. Uh, Yes. I've got two cats sitting here uh, right now. Fact, yes, like, they they just uh, they do what they're supposed to do. So score except one when is, uh, except score... when it gets into liquor cabinet, right? Score ten points yeah. if there's a cat involved. 
Exactly. Uh, yes. Well, that's, that was the uh, that was the best actor in the spirit. Was the cat? Was it Smitty the cat or something like that? <laughs> oh, the cat in the spirit was awesome. Yes, that was like a star. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was that was fun. What was it? Arthur was his name, I believe. <laughs> and again, if you want more of a detailed breakdown as to the characters, we did a very detailed breakdown yes. in the uh, Harhi Susamia discussion yes. on my a channel. A lot, um, yeah. A lot of what we've glossed over tonight, we covered last night. So definitely check that out. We we went pretty in depth. Yeah. But um <laughs> Yeah, we, we, we did what we did our due diligence, thank you. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Alrighty, and I think we talked about production overall over the oh, uh, yeah. over yeah. Uh, time. So uh, so uh uh what about favorites? Uh th how about mm. music? We we did forget well, we didn't talk about music. Well it did have it did have my favorite song of all is the beginning opening song. Yeah, they they start that over again in the show. Was it they called? Start, the, it was, the, it was the season one theme, right? The, the uh, season one opening the theme. The adventure, right? Right? <laughs> Which I, I think is like, it was like Vulcan Des Des, I think was what it is originally, or something like that. Yeah, something like that. But I was yeah. pleased to see that, hear that again. It was my yeah. favorite song in the series. Uh, what was the ending theme of this? I cannot remember. I can't offhand either. I'm gonna see if I can look that up real quick. Let's remember. see. Because uh, I mean, it was a good theme, uh, from what I remember. Right. It could. I feel like I'm... that was original to the movie, but. Um, and then, as far as the background music, I really feel like they did a better job with the background than they did with the series proper. I think it, it kind of fit the movie a little better than some of the themes. For, yeah, Bulkin Desho Desho is the original, the opener, and Yasashi Bokyaku is the ender, uh, which is by sung by Minori Chihara, who's the actual, the Seiyu uh, voices Yuki Nagato. So you have basically Haruhi doing the opener and Yuki doing the ender, in, in other words. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, the background music overall is uh, by someone. Uh, yes, that, that, that seems to be a, a good uh, way of. <laughs> yes, someone indeed. Uh, I, I guess uh, one could say. Someone Indeed. did write this. But, uh, um, it, it yeah, is. okay. IMDb uh, credits Keigo Hayashi, Kakero Ishiyama, Satoru Kosuki, and Ryuichi Takara. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it had many different writers for, uh, uh, for, uh, for, uh, for the show, but, uh, but uh, I know that. Um, they always go by, uh, by, uh, by the one who has the most numbers um, as, like, the main writer. So Right. I imagine the music for this was probably... I know some of it was borrowed from the show, uh, but I think there was more original orchestration. At least that's the impression I got. Uh, and like I said, I think it fit a little more closely... The show, like I said, was more of a grab bag of music. It was mostly effective, but you know, I've seen shows where it's done better. <laughs> okay. Yeah, definitely, it's been done better. But I feel like the the, the series had done it better, actually, oddly enough, than hmm. the uh, than the movie did musically. But uh, hmm. I still feel like uh, Kiyoani does a good job of. Doing music, oh, yeah. I mean, shoot, K on uh, is, is just a, a good oh, example yeah. of a series with uh, near perfect music when it comes. That's to a great it. example of music in the series, yeah. So uh, it, it's it's good overall. I, I think uh, that mm -hmm. this whole movie was good. 
I think that the, that the that the show had more of a chance to show good music mm-hmm. than the movie did, which is why. Mm-hmm. But I, I do think that it, you know, we, we were, yeah, we don't get a concert scene in this one, unfortunately. <laughs> I've yeah, well, seen the concert scene, so I'll, I will have to at least check that one out. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you that that last, the second to last episode is uh, is worth checking out. I don't even remember the last episode of the series, but I, I, I consider the others very good. Well, again, chronologically, the last episode is the one that's immediately preceding the film, which is the winter rain episode. It's kind of a low key episode. It's honestly one of the more forgettable ones in a lot of ways but yeah so when you watch the show chronologically that's one of the downfalls is you end on kind of a whimper <laughs> i guess they wanted to yeah. i guess they just wanted to have some normalcy because you know, right. all this excitement's going on you got a steamer down it kind of ease you into bed <laughs> it right. send you off right. and, yeah. and then send you off into one to one right. and a half more so I can I can see why they would they would do something like a like a low key a low key episode to be the last one. Right. You know, not every single anime in the universe will have you know the explosive ending. You know, everything blows up. Everything, you know, the Earth is gone. You know, <laughs> the universe has been transfixed into something right. else. Yeah. So it's kind of a relief a little bit because oh, it, this this whole show has been nothing but you know one one weird. You know, yeah. one word uh, trip after another. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, at least they we didn't, can't. Uh, uh, at least they didn't do an I am the Fist of Borg episode where, uh, where they just leave you hanging. You know. We can't <laughs> be all. We cannot be all end of Ava. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> now did uh starting from let's see. Let's talk a little bit about our favorite scene. Um, okay. Like, like, like that seems to happen. Without, I've been seeing this over and over again. Let's start. Let's start with. Uh, let's start with Dave. Okay. He, he's the most freshest, <laughs> you know, of us right now. So, uh, what do you think is your favorite? If, if there, if you could identify one scene that you said, nope, this one sticks out. What would that be? The biggest one that sticks out to me and, and me is the beginning of the relationship between Yuki Nagato uh, to and Kyo. Um, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to me, I mean, you don't, you don't normally get to see the relationship pan out as, as, as hard as it did, you know? And uh, 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 to me, it's like, it's showing you what what could have been you know uh, if things had been different you know and uh and if things had panned out a little uh, a little differently with his connections uh, but my uh, besides being my favorite scene or scenes i like uh, i like the part where he he walks up to uh, to uh, mikuru uh, and, and, and and he, 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 well, the last thing he said, uh, he says to her, uh, before uh, they go and snatch her, is, uh, wait a minute, I know a, a, a way, a way, to, a way to, uh, to show her. You have this tattoo on your left uh, breast. Why don't you <laughs> show me? And she turns a red. A star shaped birthmark, yeah. Yeah, a star shaped bir- birthmark. And uh, uh, she turns like, such a beat of red, you 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 think the tomato juice would come out? Yeah. So, <laughs> and then of course, of course, uh, uh, that sleeping bag, uh, uh, bag getting stuck in the sleeping bag. That was uh, that was kind of common. So, um, so uh, some of the uh, some of those as, as scenes were pretty comical to me. Uh, uh, Brandon, what do you think? Uh, I like the scene in the hospital. I think it wraps it up very well. It does a good job uh, showing the connection between Haruhi and Kion uh, more than um, just in case you missed it in the series. I guess uh, it, it's uh, to me it's a great it's a great start to wrap things up. It, it reminds me of all those Harry Potter books how they wrap it up in the hospital at the end. <laughs> and, uh, it, it's just in general, I think it's just a great and powerful uh, thing there. 
you're right. The ending in the hospital is as integral to a Harry Potter book as James Bond somehow being on water with a woman at the end of any Bond film. Oh, <laughs> right? And, and, and Q, always trying to figure out where the fuck he is. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know we haven't covered a bond film have we never that we have to start at the very beginning it. which is like that's the, uh, true that's true which is like the tv uh version of casino royale i don't know yep. about that or it's, yeah it's, the it's, proper it's, casino royale the uh with uh orson wells you know <laughs> but yeah <laughs> <laughs> Kabuki Jake, what do you think is the your the one scene that you like the most in the whole? In the, in the I'm whole not sure. Sh- I'm not sure there's a clear winner in this one. Uh, I'm tempted to say the scene that my picture is taken from, where Haruhi and and Kazumi are sort of reunited with Kion, and then the subsequent scene in the in the club room, just because in a very real sense. When Haruhi re-enters the story, it really energizes it in a way. And it really, because she is a whirlwind of action and crazy. And and things are never, there's never a dull moment with her. And honestly, it really did re-energize the plot a lot when that happened. And seeing her... As not as depowered and 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 less of a threat, if you will, it, it did make her more endearing. But I do agree that the hospital scene was great for character development. Some of the sequences with alternate world Yuki, most of the sequences with alternate world Yuki, she was very likable. I really liked that version of Yuki. Uh, honestly, they played up her her moe ness way too much in the spinoff series. I think they should have, if they played her closer to the movie, that would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, and then yes, the scene where Kion tries to talk to the cat, and his sister complains about him being insane. <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> well. Um. There's any number of scenes I could have really thought, and generally in anime, when I'm watching a good show, if there's a really good uh, scene, I normally would watch it three or four or five times and, you know, be one over and over again. And <laughs> this particular movie, I found my doing, doing that with the, the I call it the Haruri headbutt from hell. <laughs> she, she first kicks, uh, kicks the Keon in the shin, or in the back of the shin. And then she whacks him a couple of times on the head, but just to make sure that she's in charge now. <laughs> and You're right. The look on his face, of, what the heck are you doing? Well, he'll have another one. <laughs> it was, I, I, had, I just had to rewind it again <laughs> and again. And uh, let him know that, you know, of course, Haruri has uh, come back into play again. From the, from the moody girl that was, you know, kind of like hanging out. This place is boring to watching her, you know, suddenly become <laughs> what we were familiar with from the other world. Mm-hmm. Well, now we talked, I know we uh, talked about the movie quite a bit, uh, at the characters, music. Is there anything I forgot to talk about or we, we, we neglected to talk about? Huh? Um, I think we did pretty well with it. I'm trying, I... Didn't have as much trivia on this one as I did the other one, so I, not much there. I guess okay. that's outros. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, it is uh, worth noting. It is worth noting that this film currently ranks number eleven on Anime News Network's list of the all-time great anime. Okay. Uh, uh, it's got 8.1 IMDb rating. We didn't mention before, Grave of the Fireflies is like number 44 on IMDb, so one of the highest rated uh, animated films on that site. But yeah, yes. worth noting that we continue our theme other than TMNT 2 
Basically, right. everything we did this month is like super high rated in the fan community. Mm -hmm. So we covered yeah. some pretty good highlights, I think. So well, Nintendo, thanks to everyone Nintendo. that's suggested. <laughs> well, yeah, it's hard. It's hard to top Vanilla Ice. I mean, really. <laughs> <laughs> All right, stop. Collaboration. Listen. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, why don't we go around and, uh, and uh, 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 tell uh, tell everyone who we are? Uh, Roger, why don't you uh, tell them, uh, uh, tell the audience uh, who you are and what you do? Well, of course, of course. Uh, uh, well, right now, of course, I sell cars for a living, but, you know, just talking about anime, uh, I've been watching anime ever since the mid-70s. I didn't, I wasn't, I wasn't didn't realize it was anime, like the, was, you know, uh, you know, Star Blazers, you know, uh, the Battle of the Planets and Speed Racer and all this other stuff. I've uh, been, wa been watching anime for a long time. Uh, I, I'm a, basically, I'm a... Uh, collector of many things. Uh, back in the day, I used to collect this about everything from keys to TV guides to rocks to leaves and all kinds of strange and stuff. Uh, <laughs> computers, you know, computer, uh, computers became, uh, became important to me to uh, after, at a certain point. You know, web TV just simply didn't cut it because <laughs> you couldn't read the whole whole you know the the book all the information on the internet on on the, on web TV. So of course, I got a computer and that started my my uh, research into uh, finding uh, anime sites, and one of them was uh, uh, Anime on DVD. I don't know if anybody remembered that one, uh, but yeah, uh, my life has been circling around either computing or anime for quite a few years now. Uh, later on, of course, I I started Animazing just because I was I had to start a site from our uh, from our uh, work center because. Uh, we were instructed to make a site, and that's what that's what happened. <laughs> All righty. Uh, so uh, going over to uh, Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Well, I'm Septum Zen, the Septum Zen verse of the world. Uh, we love our physical media on the channel. Uh, you know, ever since the uh, whole um, thing that's been going around, uh, we we've been uh, kind of trying to get our uh, footing as we've gone. But we've been doing okay, continue with pickups and uh, so on. Uh, of course, uh, with uh, Blu-ray.com kind of petering out temporarily on us, it's been um, more interesting on trying to do our, uh, our upcoming, but we're going to revamp that starting next week. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, I also do some work with uh, Inside Movies Galore. And, oh, before I go to that, though, uh, you guys should check out, of course, our anime discussion on Haruhi Suzumiya. We do monthly anime discussions, and our next one will be uh, Jake's Picks, which is Death Parade. So uh, look forward to that yeah, at the I end of May. I don't have so, that one. I'm going to have to go ahead and buy it. Thanks, you, <laughs> Jake. <laughs> yeah, buy something else. That's 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 how it works with us. Uh, uh, oftentimes, mm -hmm. uh, 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 films and TV series that we discuss, we ultimately end up buying for ourselves to have in our collections. And I guess yeah. that, it, it, this it was helps our obsessions. <laughs> this was one of the relatively few shows I actually streamed when it aired. And I loved it, and I guarantee you, you watch it twice, and you'll be humming the theme song for months. Uh, <laughs> but I had to buy this. This is a cool-looking set that Funimation put out. I had to get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I've seen it. It is nice. Uh, I, I have the standard. But uh, with that being said, uh, also, we uh, did do an Oscar discussion. We've had multiple Oscar discussions mm -hmm. as time has gone on. And uh, we like to make sure that uh, we covered it pretty well. And so you can check it out from the beginning onward with our vlogcast. But we also uh, did a our discussion of the winners, if you just want to go about that, uh, just yesterday. Now, um, I do work with Inside Movies Galore to help do various things. And one of those things is help to organize. So next month, since uh, our uh, our tribute month is over, I guess we, we pay tribute to ourselves next month as we uh, start <laughs> our Meet the Cast. 
uh, section. We've been kind of annually doing it uh, from May to June each year where we kind of just go through each of us and uh, then end it with Dave and my birthdays, uh, kind of rounding it back up at the end of June. Um, so uh, we have a great, we got an interesting May coming up. And uh, <laughs> interesting. It is because uh, we start with Dave, uh, as a matter of fact, but we're going to move here on that. I just got to look it up real quick. There it is. So um, I'm going to start at the end of the month, as I normally do when I talk about the end. We're going to end up the month of May with Moe's picks of The Last Starfighter and Inner Space, two classic films and amazing ones at that. Then on the 18th, uh, Jacob. Lesser known film by many of us, uh, Herod's Law, and uh, an anime. Uh, so we go to get a little animu action. A little animu. Oh, that's a good one. Here we it is indeed. Uh, and a sad one at that. Jacob loves to get us. Yes, it here. is. I know. And uh, then, but we got a little. Herod's Law will give us a nice little bit of uh, political humor to balance it out. <laughs> And on the eleventh, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to entertain you all with uh, a a nice little uh, YouTube film called Out and About the Movie, starring Wet Movie One and uh, the uh, a fellow collector uh, of much greater note than us, but uh, still uh, a fellow collector. He's even been on our uh, on our channel. Yes, and it's a fun discussion. You should check it out. And of course, uh, the uh, movie Rising Storm, which is a uh, a lesser known, uh, but this is part of this is, is lesser known movies that connect with us. And uh, mm -hmm. Rising Storm. Are you there? I think we lost. Uh, we lost our buddy. We lost our audio. I think he said, uh, said sorry, something just, about... Uh, sorry, it was a rising storm. Yep, rising yeah. storm, uh, which is the uh, which is kind of a political but slash sci-fi uh, experience. Mm -hmm. All right. And then the last, of course, which is next week, is Dave's week. Ooh, hey. Dave, Dave actually gets to start us off with the plastics. And uh, and a local film, which I'm guessing that's what the personal connection is for him, which is the uh, Lake Michigan Monster, which recently had an Arrow release. Ooh. So, um, yeah, that was a uh, yeah. that, that was a strange uh, uh, release. Starfighter did Arrow. have an Arrow release <laughs> as well, so uh, that was also cool. So, and and Mo has given me a reason to uh, freak into that. So with that being said, uh, I hope you all have a great one, and I will pass it on to Jake. All right. So I'm Jake. Uh, also, I'm uh, here in Central Virginia as well. I co-host Septum Sin vs. the World. Uh, I don't recall if he mentioned, honestly, but we had our first uh, uh, gathering, uh, if you will, since this whole pandemic took place. Uh over the weekend for the Oscars. Um, and so we had some interesting Oscar commentary to follow it up. And uh, yeah, as he said, great discussion on Haruhi Suzumiya, the show. Uh, yes, we do have a lot of fun anime uh, <laughs> discussions uh, that we have hit. We've hit some interesting shows and uh Hopefully, we'll continue to do so as we go along. I'm I'm looking forward to that. I look forward to revisiting Death Parade. Definitely, I intentionally picked a shorter one for this coming month, so that uh, believe me, I have some long ones in the pipe. But we, we this one will be shorter. It'll be good. Um, I, of course, am also a uh, active collector of all sorts of media. Um, Blu-rays, DVD, uh, comics, books, music, what have you, whatever strikes the fancy, I collect it, and uh, 
been very active trying to get my um, nursery business off the ground. Whew, that takes some doing, but <laughs> still trying to find time to watch some good stuff so I can join you fine hey. folks here for these discussions. <laughs> yep. Alrighty, and my name is David Streggy. I'm one of the founding fathers of Inside Movies Galore, where we go on, uh, uh, where we uh, go our separate ways, watch the uh, uh, the film, come back on the next w uh, uh, week, and give you our uh, 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 impressions on the f uh, films. And hopefully, you've enjoyed our uh, delightful adventures uh, uh, doing so. So, uh, th uh, thank you for. Uh, 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 li uh, listening, but I also moonlight under a different channel called Delusions of Grandeur, where I go on about my own video pickups and my own opinions and thoughts and beliefs on uh, what I think about f uh, films from time to time. Uh, uh, but uh, but uh, I, I, I want uh, to uh, point out tomorrow uh, Boris and Dave will be coming ba back with another episode tomorrow because we are doing an Ozploitation period. Where last week we <laughs> uh, we talked about the classic Wizard of Oz, and then uh, uh, tomorrow we are going to attempt to do one on Return to Oz. So um, stay tuned for that, ladies and gentlemen. We'll probably be doing uh, that around noon uh at least in my time period uh so definitely look out for that and uh i think we're uh, gonna be uh, uh doing some oz uh films for qu uh, quite some time i think we're gonna do oz the great and powerful ne uh, next week we're gonna be covering tin man the miniseries after that and so on and so forth so we're uh, we're definitely gonna get yeah, there's our, an anime uh where, uh, yeah, there is, isn't there? There are quite a few anime. There's an anime about Oz. There mm -hmm. are many animes about Oz. <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and, well, animations, so to speak, that I right. think that I'll probably be, be, be covering two newer ones and like five older ones. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, ones uh, uh, so, um, definitely. I think we, we, yeah. we, will, we, uh, we will also on the main channel have to hit Wizard of Oz one of these days. That's a. Yeah. That's a one day, yeah, <laughs> gotta get and and return to Oz, which is my favorite Wizard of Oz film. Return to Oz hmm. is ah, well. In any yeah. ca uh, case, uh, like, share, and subscribe. And, uh, uh, oh, and uh, I guess uh, you said you said next week were my picks or the following week. Next week, your picks, dude. Yeah, you right. got the domestics and uh, and. Oh yeah, the Lake Michigan monster. The domestics which... and Lake Michigan monster. Uh, you see the domestics. The uh, the reason why I, li I like that one uh, one is it's about a couple in a in an apocalyptic uh, world, and they just so happen to be on their way to Milwaukee. So uh, 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 that's kind of why I, I like that uh, 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 that film. But we'll get more into uh, uh, detail. It's kind of a straightforward film, and I'll leave it at that. So, <laughs> uh, and Lake Michigan Monster, it wa was kind of a hit in, 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 here in uh, w Wisconsin. And uh, uh, for getting a Arrow re uh, release, that was kind of a surprise. So, uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, considering the movie, definitely. Uh, if I'm remembering correctly, I'm that one had a yeah. really cool looking cover, didn't it? Yeah. It definitely so, got yeah. a, a really cool release, at least for a small time independent film. So. Cool. It came across a lot like a dead gentleman type film. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Right? Okay. <laughs> In any case, um, definitely uh, keep a lookout for, uh, for those, and we'll see you all same time, same channel next week. All right. Thank you. All right. Say good night, everyone.